Qin Shi Huang is the first emperor, and he was famous for building the terracotta warrior tomb in Shanxi, which was only discovered by a farmer 43 years ago. Now it's been listed as UNESCO World Heritage Site. And gold was the only color uh, the emperor can wear. The Emperor Qin set the dress code and the rules. The fashion back then was set for dark and simple one. And one piece clothing wrap around. You can see uh, Rebecca's wearing similar clothing. And we call it Shen Yi. Our next model, which is Jack. Jack, are you there, Jack? The Silk Road and the trade of the silk has started uh, in the uh, Han Dynasty. So that changed the clothing during the Han Dynasty uh, dramatically. The color crossed as a letter Y. You can see from Jack here. And the white, the left is always on top. The big long sleeve were popular during this time. The official would have more elaborate clothing and jade decoration on their belt. For example here. Thank you, Jack. And this is also another Han Dynasty costume. As you can see, there's a the color is a shape of Y. And then you have long sleeves as well. Thank you, Kayla. Well done. These are my students from Temple Carry next door. Okay, the next, uh, I don't have a costume there, but you, if you are familiar with the Korean dress, Korean dress are very similar to this, okay? This is from the Shui Dynasty. And it was the fashion, the skirt were, were on top of the clothing, so cover your chest. And the hat indicate their official status. And during Song Dynasty, often the color of the bell will indicate the official title and the level of the job. For example, indigo will represent uh, level nine and over, and green for seven, and red for five, and purple for three. So never wear purple, because it's the lowest Level. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to change the music. Don't go, Sarah. <laughs> As a trade between the East and West, West got busier and it influenced the fashion during the Tang Dynasty. This is a typical Tang Dynasty uh, costume. Women's clothing changed dramatically. They don't, they don't cover themselves anymore. Like they can, you can see they, they, they show a little bit more of their skin. And also during this uh, dynasty, uh, ladies start wearing makeups. Thank you, Sarah. The fashion doesn't change much during Song and Yuan and Ming Dynasty. However, women started to do foot binding in Song Dynasty. If you don't know what foot binding is, when the when if you have a girl, when the when the girl is born, they start binding their foot. They, so when they grow up, their foot would be like this much, like a baby foot, and they'd be walking like this. And uh, that was considered uh, beautiful back then. And also they, the, it's like the, the smaller your feet are, the more beautiful you are, okay? It's like one of the tribe in Africa where they have the neck binding. When the longer the neck is, the more beautiful they are. So this was in the uh, Song Dynasty. And luckily we don't have that now. Um, the clothing in Qing Dynasty, we have, um, Isabel here. Isabel is uh, Isabel's dress is from Tang Dynasty, okay. And Rebecca here is wearing the Qing Dynasty uh, dress. 